Naming ketones and aldehydes. We're going to go through the IUPAC rules for naming both these functional groups in this lesson. And we'll start with naming them as the highest priority functional group in a molecule, but then we'll also name them when they're not the highest priority functional group in a molecule and pretty much go through every kind of example you're likely to encounter in your undergraduate organic chemistry course. Now this lesson's part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'm releasing them weekly throughout the school year. So if you want to be notified every time I post a new lesson, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. So before we dive into naming ketones here, we first just want to quickly talk about uh, uh, this carbon oxygen double bond that's often referred to as a carbonyl group or carbonyl group, depending on who you talk to. And so both ketones and aldehydes have this carbonyl group or carbonyl group, depending on, again, on who you talk to. Uh, and you should know that that's not the name of a functional group. It is a, uh, a moiety here, if you will, that's part of both a ketone and aldehyde functional group. So the carbonyl itself, again, is not the functional group, but it is a component of both ketones and aldehydes here. So I just want to point that out. One other thing is when you've got these carbonyl groups, we often have a new way of identifying carbons using Greek letters. And so your carbonyl carbon is ground zero. So, but then as you get further and further away, you start giving letters of the Greek alphabet. So one carbon away from the carbonyl carbon is the alpha carbon. Two carbons away in any direction is the beta carbon. Three carbons away would be gamma, and then you get delta, and so on and so forth. And again, this is not going to be you know, of interest to us just yet with nomenclature or anything. I just want to make sure this is clear from the get-go. This will be something we incorporate uh, here and there throughout. All right, so let's get those out of here, and we don't need him anymore either. And now we're going to go through the IUPAC nomenclature of ketones. And so for ketones, the suffix is O-N-E for ketone. Not too bad. And you want to find your longest continuous carbon chain that the carbonyl carbon is a part of, and then number it to give the carbonyl carbon the lowest possible number. And so in this case, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven either way. So seven carbons. And if we number left to right, the carbonyl is going to get a lower number. And so in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And in this case, the only thing that's not part of that parent chain is the methyl group attached at position six. And when it's a substituent, we name those first. So we'll start this off with six methyl. And then your parent chain. So in this case, again, we're going to have a suffix of O-N-E. And with seven carbons, that's heptane. So this is going to be heptanone. And we've got one of two options here. We can do Heptan, and then before own, we got to give the location. So it could be heptan three own. So, however, uh, we've seen this in the past as well. If you only have one major functional group in your parent chain, so then you can put the number, the chain locator for it at the beginning of the parent chain as well. So we could also call this six methyl three heptanone. Cool, and that one is named. Now, what if it's part of a cyclic structure? Well, it turns out it doesn't really change much. So, but in this case, with the ketone on the ring, that by definition is going to be carbon one. And whether we go clockwise or counterclockwise, it wouldn't make a difference. If there were a substituent on this ring, then we would number it clockwise or counterclockwise to get that substituent the lowest possible number. But again, so being that the ketone is the major function group, it would be still at carbon number one. All right, but in this case, this is just a parent chain of cyclopentane. So this is just cyclopentanone. So, and in this case, because on a ring, the ketone had to be located at position one, we leave it out of the name. We saw this with like cyclopentanol or cyclohexanol as well uh, back in the alcohol chapter. All right, so what if you actually have two ketones in your molecule? Well, if that's the case, then you want to find the longest continuous carbon chain that they are both a part of, and then number it to get the first one you encounter the lower, lowest possible number. So in this case, they're both just part of the only parent chain that is. There's no substituents here. So uh, in this case, if we go left to right, one, two, three, the first one you encounter is at carbon three. If you go right to left, the first one you encounter will be at carbon two. So that's going to be the preferred method. So we'll number the parent chain here right to left. So and just like we've seen, instead of just saying own, in this case, hexanone, we're going to say hexane dione. And since di begins with a consonant, we'll actually keep the E on hexane, whereas with like pentanone or heptanone up there, we drop the E on pentane since the O-N-E begins with a vowel sound. But in this case, with di beginning with a consonant sound, we'll actually keep it. So uh, in this case, this is going to be hexane dash two four. 
Dione. Cool. And there is our lovely name. And once again, because these are the there's only one you know type of major functional group, you could put the two and the four at the beginning of this well, but you'll actually more commonly with two of them see it right in the middle of a word just like so. So now we're going to dive into naming aldehydes. And aldehyde has got a carbon oxygen double bond, but it's got a hydrogen on at least one of the two sides. That's its distinction from a ketone here. And so when you've got an aldehyde, what's convenient though, is it's always going to have to be at the end of the chain. There's only one place for it to branch out into a carbon chain. And so as a result, when we name it as the highest priority functional group as an aldehyde, we'll name it with the suffix al, but it'll have to be located at position one. And because it has to be located at position one at the end of the chain, we don't include the one in the name. Uh, so in this case, we'll number this from right to left. So this is one, two, three, four, and five. And in this case, we've also got an alkene. And I wanted you to see uh, when we got an alkene in there because uh, with alkenes or alkynes, you can incorporate those into the parent chain along with a ketone or aldehyde. So I wanted to make sure you, you've seen that before. So I'm gonna leave the alkene out for a second. So just pretend we had the alkane and then we'll see how the alkene changes things here. So, so let's just pretend for a second that we had had this guy. So just a five carbon aliphatic uh, aldehyde here in this case. And so again, we would have numbered this right to left and the aldehyde by default would have been at carbon number one. And we would have simply called this pentanal, pentanal. Now with the alkene there, it's going to be a little bit different. Instead of pentane, it's going to be pentene, but we got to give the location of that ene. And so in this case, it's between four and five, so it gets the lower number. So pent four ene. Oh, and in this case, my bad. The aldehyde again has to be at position one, so it's not part of the name for aldehydes uh, when you're naming it with the al suffix as the highest priority functional group. And so in this case, that's it. Pent four enal. All right. Another special case you might see is when the aldehyde carbon is directly attached to a cycloalkane. Uh, and in this case, you might be tempted to call this cyclopentanal, just like we saw cyclopentanone in the last example. But cyclopentanal, if you look at that name, would sound like it has five carbons. Well, this doesn't have five carbons. It has the five in the ring plus the carbonyl carbon. It's got six carbons. And so in this case, you actually give the name of the ring first. And so this is cyclopentane. So, and then you just say carb aldehyde, all one big word. All right, so you got cyclopentane, which shows five carbons, and then carb aldehyde, one additional carbon, that's an aldehyde. And so again, for cyclic aldehydes, again, where the aldehyde is directly attached through one bond to a ring, you take this approach instead. All right, finally, last example here. So here we've got actually three functional groups in here. We've got an aldehyde at the end on the right here. We've got a ketone in the middle right here, but then we've got a carboxylic acid over here. And I wanted to include this with a carboxylic acid, similar to what we've done with some of the other functional groups earlier, is that carboxylic acid's top dog, highest on the food chain for the, the functional groups you're ever gonna encounter and stuff. So in this case, as a result, your aldehyde and your ketone are not the highest priority functional groups, and they're gonna be named as substituents instead. And so with the carboxylic acid being top dog, he gets to be number one. And so for a four carbon carboxylic acid, that is butanoic acid. And it's always at position one for carboxylic acid turns out. So it's, um, that won't be included in the name, the one. So this is butanoic acid as a parent chain. So, and for the substituents now, for a ketone, it's called an oxo group. And for an aldehyde, it's called a formal group. And so we're gonna say three oxo and we're gonna say four formal before the name. And uh, when you're naming multiple substituents, you name them in alphabetical order. So we'll actually say formal first. So this is four formal, three oxo, butanoic acid. Cool. And just like I said, I wanted you to see an example of both a ketone and an aldehyde where they're not the highest priority functional group. And it's just easier if I incorporate them into the same example. It takes a little, a little less time here. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? Best things you can do to make sure that other students get to see this lesson as well. If you are looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, if you are looking for practice in naming ketones and aldehydes, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.